appropriate that the choir sang this, Make Me an Instrument of Your Peace, um, based on the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Don Martin, our choir director, is uh, on retreat this weekend at the Franciscan Retreat Center in New Mexico, uh, led by his idol, Richard Rohr. So we look forward to Don coming back really rested and spiritually rejuvenated next week. And we're so thankful to have Marilyn Mertz lead us uh, in his absence. So appreciate your wonderful anthem today. Let us pray, shall we? Gracious God, we thank you for the word that you give us. And we pray that through this time of preaching and hearing that we might be transformed all the more into instruments of your peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Two weeks ago, our theme in worship was letting go, letting go. Jesus in that scripture for that week said, I come not to bring peace but division. You might remember that. I come to break apart. I come to force things to let go, in other words, of each other. And we talked about how there's something inherent to the spiritual walk, the spiritual development that involves letting go. And if you notice, Jesus comes back to that theme today in our reading from Luke. The reading is bookended on each end by three things that Jesus tells us we must let go of in order to be disciples. The first was family. Unless you hate, he said, family, you cannot be a disciple. I see some of you are already wincing. And then he says, uh, well, let's throw money and possessions in there. Do we have anybody else wincing? Unless you give away all your possessions, you cannot, he says, be my disciple. And then to top it off, he adds our life, our health, our comforts unless you are willing to carry the cross. In other words, suffer the crucifixion that I suffered physically on the cross, then you cannot be my disciple. Now, it's interesting to me uh, every time we read Scripture in, in worship and, and we read a hard passage like this, and then we say, the Word of God for the people of God, and, and everyone goes, thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you, God, for giving me that Word. <laughs> Because if we think about it, that's rough. It's hard. It's, it's hard. Think about this. The future is always uncertain. The future is always unknown. And to walk into an unknown anything, like a third grader walking into an eighth grade classroom, it's vulnerable. We feel exposed. We're uncertain. And that's with all of these comfortable things around us like family and assets in the bank and good health. To, 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 to walk into an unknown future with all of these things is hard enough, let alone to let go of them. That's awkward because those physical, tangible things and, and this health, things like that, those are precisely the places we run to in order to find security. We feel more secure the more family love we have around us. And if we're feeling insecure, we may seek security in those relationships. Or we feel more confident about the unknown future with more assets in the bank. Or with better health. And so Jesus is saying, let go of these things and walk this path of discipleship hard. But I'd like to direct your attention. In the bulletin, I, I have a picture. So I'd like you to go ahead and get it out, if you would. And I'm going to talk about this picture for just a moment. If you did not get one, then look on with your neighbor, if you don't mind. But uh, this is... Well, does anybody recognize this picture? It's the Pieta, or as someone after 8 o'clock service said, the Piata. <laughs> the Pieta uh, um, sculpted by Michelangelo in around 1497-1498 it stands in St. Peter's Basilica how many of you have been there? some of you I'm sure yes look at that 
you've been there, so you've seen it. St. Peter's in Vatican City. It's the only piece, evidently, that Michelangelo signed or ascribed his name to physically, and he also did this before he was 30, so kind of humbling. Uh, what did you do before you were 30? <laughs> but the pietà is an Italian, pietà is an Italian word for pity or compassion, and it's a beautiful picture, isn't it? It's Mary, the mother of Jesus, holding the crucified Jesus. He's just been taken down from the cross, and we see Mary, who pondered all these things in her heart when the angel spoke to her uh, at the birth of Jesus and witnessing Jesus' birth, and now is, is, is pondering. We see her pondering in compassion all that has just happened to, to Christ on the cross. Well, what is compelling to me for our purposes today is that the Pietà, the sculpture, was created from one block of marble. And so what that means is that for this beautiful, holy, magnificent, gorgeous, moving, transcendent, transformational piece of art to emerge, thousands upon thousands of little pieces had to be let go of, off that original block. Chunks and slivers and sections. And none of those sections and slivers and chunks was bad, wasn't worthless, wasn't inferior, inherently subpar. In fact, each one of those fragments could have been sculpted and carved into its own beautiful piece of work. But for this purpose, for this pieta, for this creation, they were unnecessary. And this creation could only be given life to if these things were let go of. And to me, that's the essence of the gospel message. It's the essence of the life of discipleship. It's the essence of Jesus' words in Luke 14. And anytime he talks about things like that that are hard, about division and letting go and separation. And that is that God has a plan and God has purposes for you, for, the, for, the, for all of us. And those, those plans are being fulfilled, but they come to fruition out there in that future that is unknown. We're on that road, and to be on that road means that we are being transformed, but not fully transformed until God's plans are fulfilled. And to be a disciple means that sometimes we let go of or sacrifice something in the short run so that God's plans and purposes can be fulfilled in the long run. We see that in Scripture. Simon, Andrew, James, and John, they sacrificed or let go of fishing for fish in the short run so that they might fish for people in the long run. Or Jesus on Good Friday sacrificed his physical comfort in the short run so that in the long run we would have eternal comfort. It's hard to... to hear Jesus speak these words, but for me, about family and about possessions and about health, but for me, the Jesuits have a really nice and insightful way of thinking about our relationship to these things. The Jesuits say that our purpose on earth is to praise God and to serve God and to walk with God and to live more fully with God and to connect more deeply with God. And everything on earth is a gift from God. The people that we love and the assets in the bank and the health that we've been given, everything is a gift from God whose primary purpose is to help us fulfill our purpose. And so if the things in our lives are not helping us fulfill that purpose, then we need to let go of them or let go of the way we relate to them or that needs to be changed. So, for example, the people that we love, the BFF that we have or the family member that we're the closest to and we can't imagine living life without, God has given us that person to help us walk more closely on the path with Christ. And if that person is not helping us do that, then something about that relationship has to be let go of. Or our health, our health. Our health is given to us such that we can serve, honor, and praise God more fully. And so if, if we are the healthiest person alive but are not walking closely, more closely with God, then our health is not really helping us at all. Conversely, if we're traumatized with, 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 with devastating illness, physically, emotionally, mentally, but that condition 
is such that we're witnessing and testifying or, or helping others live in, in the greater light of Jesus Christ, then that, that's serving a, a, a greater purpose. It is good for us. Part of being a disciple is understanding that we're being transformed and that on that road of transformation, sometimes we let go of and sacrifice things in the short run so that God's plan in the long run can be fulfilled. But you know, when Jesus talks about this in this reading today, and I felt all week that this reading is a little disjointed because this is the way he starts and ends the reading. <laughs> he, ta- he starts and ends the reading with letting go. You cannot be my disciple unless these things are let go of. And then in the middle, he talks about something different. He talks about architects. He talks about preparing for the long haul and preparing for the future. And he says, none of us would go about building a bridge if we only had enough material for the footings. And none of us would undertake a long-range mission if we only had enough supplies to last for a few hours. And so both of these examples are an indication that we are to, to keep the bigger picture in mind and to look beyond the moment. We can't just live in the moment. We need to be prepared for the long haul, be prepared for that, that road that lies out ahead of us. It's foolish not to because otherwise we'll be embarrassed, Jesus says, or, 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 or we won't be prepared for the different scenarios that could present themselves to us. And to me, when I read this all week, like I say, it feels a little disjointed because on the one hand, Jesus says, over here, I guess, is what I wanted to say. Jesus wants to say, have the big picture in mind. You need to have the big picture. You need to be thinking about the future and be prepared for where you're going. And on the other hand, he seems to say, just let go. Got to give up control and let go and walk into that future and just trust. And how do we reconcile these? Well, here's how I reconcile them and where the good news speaks to me through these. Yes, to be a disciple means that we walk into the uncertain future. And yes, that is unsettling. And yes, it makes us insecure. And yes, it can be scary. And yes, we want to see how the movie ends, but we're only in the first act. And yes, that is unsettling and disturbing. And it's risky and all of that. But the good news is that God has the big picture in mind. And God bears the responsibility for that big picture and takes that from us. And that's hopeful to me. God is this architect who has envisioned how the vision, what the the finished product looks like, and also all of the resources and materials to help us build it and to and, 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 and to discover that. And so, while that doesn't eliminate all of these things about stepping off into an uncertain future, it makes giving up control easier because we know the one that we're giving control to. And we trust the one that we're giving control to. We trust that, as the Scripture says, this one that we give control to has plans not to harm us, but to help us. And we can put our faith in this one more than anything else. So to me, it's always hard it's always hard in the little picture, like we said in the prayer, the little picture is always where the stresses and the anxieties of life can be overwhelming. But in the big picture that God is holding, they're never life-defeating. And the life of a disciple is to walk in between those. I want to close by sharing with, this, sharing with you this prayer. It's one of my favorite prayers, and I discovered it this year. It's from a Frenchman. It's on the, I'm sorry, it's on the bottom of the picture. And so um, it's, it's from a Frenchman, and you can tell that by his name, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. And it, what I love about this prayer is it's just, it, it's very honest. It's very, it, it presents for me a very honest and real way of how we live in this world, impatiently, sometimes scared or sometimes frightened, or vulnerable, or risky about walking into a future that is uncertain, and how we want to rush to the end and get to the finished product just as quickly as we can. But it also speaks just as loudly to me about how we can trust, how we can trust this one who's walking alongside us and who's protecting us and who has already provided for our future. And, like Hannah was saying in her children's message, sometimes we want to rush ahead, but it's those those 
middle stages, he calls them. These middle stages are the ones that are maybe most necessary for us to discover the plans that God ultimately has for us. So I want to close our sermon by just reading this. And if I invite you to read along with me. And I printed it off because I wanted you to be able to take this home with you. And if it ever helps you, then please use it as often as you can. But let us pray. Above all, gracious Lord, may I trust in your slow work. I know that I am quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. I know that I should like to skip the intermediate stages. I am impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stage of instability that may take time. And so, God, I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let me allow them to grow and to take shape without undue haste. May I not try to force things along as though I could make them be today what time will make of them tomorrow. Let me trust in you, in your knowledge and in your progress. And in the meantime, may I accept the anxiety of feeling myself in suspense and incomplete, but giving you the benefit of believing that your hand is leading me. Amen.